Hello potters and welcome back for our second video on creating a Kiranuki lidded jar. So last time we met I was setting up a piece to be carved. I wedged it a little bit. I set the basic shape that I wanted whether it be round or square. I chose square and I also added in some texturizing marks uh, to just sort of set the shape before I really start carving. So we're gonna pick up from there. We're gonna be using the same tools. All right, so you're gonna want a knife. You're gonna want your trimming tool. Small one's gonna come in handy. I've also got a extra, very small trimming tool. I'm gonna want a metal rib. It's nice to have a serrated rib around, and I'm gonna want my uh, wire tool. So this has been sitting out overnight, probably 12 hours, maybe 16 hours uncovered. Uh, I'm pretty much living in a basement right now, so it stays a little humid down here. My pieces aren't drying out as quickly as they might in your house. So um, usually it's always a good idea to at least drape a piece of plastic over your pieces if you don't know exactly when you're going to be coming back to it, especially if you don't know, um, you know, when you might have a chance to work on it again. If you're find yourself at home and you can keep checking in on it, like uh, do that, but it's gonna, it's gonna be a while. Cause this piece is about mm, two, three inches thick. It's gonna take a while for this whole thing to desaturate. I'd say this is still at sort of a soft leather hard, but uh, it's firm enough that I can start carving into it. So I'm gonna review a couple techniques. Let's uh, add some more texture to this now that I've gotten a now I have a more dry block. I'm gonna take this piece down, taking my wire tool and pull it straight out to add some of these shelves that I like. here with my knife. I'm going to add a couple notches. Just wrap this thing up a little bit. These things are nice because I really like it when something has like a lot of texture, especially with this sort of texture. It looks like this piece has been through a lot, like it's come through a war zone. And I kind of like that when uh, just the surface of a piece can tell a story. So I want this piece to look like it's really had a long life and it's really seen some stuff. So I'm adding a lot of these little shelves to it. All right. Okay. Yeah, I think that's good. All right, we still have our registry mark from our last video. That's where my lid's gonna be. So let's start addressing this lid. All right, so let's get out a separate piece that's already finished. So you'll see here that this Kiranuki jar, it's got an interior. It's got a hole in the side because I got a little too aggressive with my carving and I put a hole in the side of it. I could patch that up if I want but I'm just not gonna keep this piece, so it's good for a demo. All right, so this doesn't really have like a uh, exact shape. It's sort of more organic than the jar I'm working on. So like the lid, you can see, has a very unique shape to it. But one thing that's true of all lids of this manner is that it has like a, something called a gallery. And the gallery is like this little lip that your lid sort of sits on and locks onto. The kind of lids that I like a lot are called drop lids. And what a drop lid is, is that it has a little extension that fits inside and drops into your piece. This keeps it from wiggling around too much or falling out. That little notch, it fits in to the top of my piece 
and make sure that my lid fits securely. So the technique I'm gonna be showing you today is to create a gallery and a drop lid from a solid block of clay. And it takes a little finessing, but um, I'm confident each of you is gonna nail it and make a really nice Kiranuki jar. So the first thing I'm gonna to need to do is I really wanna be able to create this little notch, this little drop that fits in to my lid. And the only way to do that is to subtract clay. If you've got this big ribbon tool, you can follow the line, this registry line that we made earlier, and you can just carve out a big notch. This is going to lower the height of your piece, but it's gonna create like a bigger area to drop down inside your jar. Since I have a smaller piece, I'm gonna use a smaller ribbon tool to create this gallery. And all I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this line as a guide where the top of my ribbon tool, the top part here, is going to be coming in contact with the top of this registry line. And I'm going to dig in with my tool and I'm gonna carve a strip of clay out from the entirety of my vessel. I'm gonna be subtracting a large strip of clay. And this is going to give me that recessed area that allow me to drop down later. But uh, I'm also gonna be lowering the height of my piece. So let's get started with that. I'm using the top line. I'm using the line as a guide. The top of my tool is in contact with that line. So I'm, I'm carving directly below You see, I'm going to remove all that. You see, I've maybe removed like an eighth of an inch of clay from my piece. See that? All right. And you know what? I've noticed I didn't take out much clay from this side. So I'm going to even that out. I removed that whole thing. So there's a nice notch now on the side of my piece. All right, I'm gonna move on to the next area. Carving out that piece. Taking it all the way to the side and removing that. Mm -hmm. Do that again. piece carving in moving all right so I got a pretty good notch in there but I want this to be a little bit deeper I have so many little notches on the outside of my piece I need to retain some thickness of my wall to make sure as I'm scooping out all the clay here in a couple minutes that I'm not like poking through the side like my last jar. So to ensure that my wall is thick enough, I'm going to take out another ribbon of clay from each side of this box. Just gonna make sure I have a nice thick wall and that my lid has something to fit into. Taking out another ribbon.
right, so I have a nice thick notch now all alongside this. I'm just gonna clean up some of these frayed edges real quick. Not totally, but just knocking some of them off because I'm a little too, uh, a little too focused on these details sometimes. All right, now I have my notch carved. You can see how that notch is later going to be something that fits inside of my jar. So once I have that notch, I'm going to take my wire tool and I'm going to try to cut off just the bottom of that piece. So draw on that through. Making sure not to cut through the opposite side of my piece. All right. So now I got what will be my lid off. It has a nice little recessed area that's going to fit inside my jar later. Just cleaning this up. Getting rid of any frayed edges on the top. I'll finish that work in just a little bit. Yeah, so this will be decent. All right. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off and you can see where that initial notch was carved and you can see the footprint of um, where you separated your lid from the bottom of your jar. And this square that you see here, the uh, footprint, that's going to be your guide of where you need to carve from. Because if you hollow out straight down into this area using this shape as a guide, you can be reasonably certain that this piece is going to fit right in and not slide around too much. All right, so first things first, what I'm gonna do is getting out my regular ribbon tool using the square side. I'm gonna draw a line. I'm not really trying to carve out, I'm just marking where I'm going to hollow from. All right, you can see here, kind of marked out. So the edge of this square is gonna be sort of my like demarcation line. I'm not gonna go past that. I'm just gonna start carving straight down from this point. Right. Let's take the camera and get a top view of what I'm doing. So I'm going to get my regular ribbon tool out. I'm going to start carving away, taking it out one strip at a time.
This clay is pretty perfect for what I'm doing now. It's coming straight out. Not trying to stick too much. Something I like to do is I'll carve down this way. And then for my next row, I'll flip the thing and I'll carve down this way. It keeps my edges straight. You can see I'm holding the clay on the outside. This is just helping me gauge where my ribbon tool is and helping me from cutting through the side of my piece. Turn it, keep going. I'm hoping by the time you see this video, I've figured out how to edit and speed this process up for demonstration purposes. But if not, um, you could be taking this time to work along with the video. Maybe start preparing your clay for carving later, or you could be working on a Karanuki cup from our last lesson, whatever you want. Or you can just watch me take little chunks out of this piece, whatever your fancy is. back a little bit. All right, so I've gotten to a good depth. My walls on the inside are a little messy, so let's clean those up. I'm just gonna be using the curved edge of my ribbon tool. And holding the piece in, I'm just gonna lightly, I'm barely putting any pressure at all. I'm just doing soft strokes up the side remove any texture. Okay. If your clay is anything like mine, it's probably a little soft. So I'm just trying to get rid of those big chunks from the inside. I'm going to go back and do a lot of smoothing with my finger. Or if you have a cleanup sponge, that works really well too. Uh, mud tools make some of the best pottery tools in my opinion especially their pottery sponges. They're color-coded. I believe their blue sponge is called their workhorse. It's uh, great for saturating or removing moisture from your piece, but they have a white finishing sponge. It's like four bucks. It's very fine grit. It's great for smoothing pieces out. Mud tools.
All right, so I got most of the texture out of there. Now I'm just gonna go back with my finger and I'm gonna smooth out this area. Making sure it's nice and flush. All right, you can see in here, it's a little bit better, it's a little bit smoother. If, you know, I was just making this for myself, I'd really get in there and try to buff this out as much as possible. But for brevity's sake, I'm just gonna move on. I'm gonna start cleaning up this gallery area. I'm gonna use my, the rounded edge of my ribbon tool. I'm just gonna smooth this area out a little bit. It's really chunky right now. It's kind of sharp in places, so I just want to remove all that sharpness, all those little boogers of soft clay. I want to get that out of there. Get it out of there. All right. Okay. All right, any of these ragged edges along the side, I can just clean up a bit my finger. I don't want any sharp edges because like after we fire this in a bisque kiln and then put some glaze over it, those sharp edges, they will become razor sharp and could cut you when you're just trying to put away your necklace or your rings or whatever you want to put in a box this size. But whatever it is, you don't want to cut yourself when you're reaching for it. So I want to make sure this is nice and soft. All right. Oof. I see a piece that I don't like. I carve that away a little bit. All right. All right. So I got a nice interior for my box now. Let's see how our lid is doing. How does this best fit on here? I think that's it. All right. So my lid, it's a little too wide for where I carved down. So we're gonna adjust that by getting out our ribbon tool. And I'm just gonna take a little bit off each side because I need this notch here I need that to fit inside my jar and it's just a little too big. So I'm gonna address that right now. Just gonna remove some clay from each side. See, I still have a little bit of clay over here. I'm going to trim down this side a little bit more. And down this area a little bit more. Here we go. It's starting to fit a lot better. But this corner is catching, so I'm going to trim down this area a little bit. It's looking pretty good. All right. Yeah, I like.
like that. I like that a lot. So I know how my lid's gonna fit. You know, I got a nice little notch here from carving. I'm gonna mirror that down here. And this is just gonna be like a little registry mark for me. That way I'll know where my lid's supposed to fit every time. Because the way, since we're carving this notch into the side of our piece in a very like organic and asymmetrical shape, there's gonna be one way that this lid fits on better than others. And you wanna sort of hide a little signpost in your piece so users can find it. I'm gonna cut a little notch over here too. So now, if I line my box up with those two notches, now my lid's gonna fit. All right, now I'm just gonna go back, clean this stuff up. And all those sharp edges off of there. All right, clean this area up. You know, it's kind of ragged on the inside of this lid, so I'm gonna smooth that out with my finger. All right, where's my registry marks? Boom, set it back, and all right. I got a nice little rocky jar with a lid that fits great. I can keep all my little knickknacks or curio or object dar, whatever you want to put in there. We're, we're good to go. All right, so that is lesson two. I'll see you back in our synchronous Zoom meeting. All right.